So today I'm going to be talking to you about some hidden gems in the book world, specifically the booktube world, because you know, that's where I live. I'm going to be talking to you about five books that I think are so incredible, but I never hear talked about, as well as one series that does get talked about in the wider literary sphere, but on booktube, for whatever reason, gets very little love. So I want to shout about that a little bit as well. But anyway, Hidden Gems, Underrated Books, however this video is titled. We're going to talk, I'm going to give you some recommendations for some excellent books that I don't think get recommended a ton. But before we get into the recommendations, a shout out to today's sponsor, Campfire. Campfire is a reading app where ebooks come with a VIP pass into the world of every book. Every now and then you find a book that just captures your attention, your very being. It becomes a personality trait. I hope that's not just me. <laughs> and then you just look for more than just other people to talk to about it, but you want to know as much as you can about that book. On Campfire, there are more than 300,000 authors and readers that share and discover new exciting genre fiction like fantasy, sci-fi, and romance. The books come with character profiles, interactive maps, exclusive short stories, and a chance to engage directly with the author. All you have to do is pick out a book, and as you read each chapter, you can collect behind the scenes bonus content curated by the author. You can save your favorites on your bookshelf, make custom collections to organize your TBR, and dive deeper into the stories that you love. And authors earn higher royalties on Campfire than they do on any other platform. So if you want a new place to discover new books, interact with tons of readers and authors alike, get bonus content, and dig into worlds that you fall in love with even more, use the link in my description to check out Campfire. Okay, five books plus a series that I just need to scream about. I did put a limit on myself because I like to do these videos occasionally. I think it's fun to kind of spotlight books that don't get a ton of spotlight in this space. I like to make this a reoccurring series. So I did limit myself to only talking about books that I've read within the last year. That way it doesn't, you know, these videos aren't repetitive. I'm always giving you new recommendations. So the first one I recommend, I want to recommend to you is some, something that I just read recently. It's a literary fiction and it's called Door to Door Bookstore. So if you like books like A Man Called Ove, you might find that Door to Door Bookstore is also a hit for you. I got it from the library, so I can't hold it up. Ta-da. This follows an old cranky man named Carl and he is on, so he is a door-to-door -door book distributor. He uh, has his clients that stay in their home and he goes to their house and gives them a personalized, already wrapped book for them, for their taste and their interest. And he delivers it at their door and then, and then moves on. This is his job. This is what he does. And there's a young girl what was her name? Shasha. Her name is Shasha. And she's been, she's a nine-year-old girl and she's been watching Carl from afar. She's been watching this book delivery man, book crawler, book walker. I don't remember what she called him. And one day she joins him on his walk. Uh, and he tells her, no thanks. <laughs> I like being alone. She's like, I like being alone too. Sometimes I like being alone with someone. Here I am. <laughs> and she just weasels her way into his, into his job, into his daily routine, and then weasels her way into the hearts and lives of the clients and eventually of Carl as well. It's a story of the love of stories. It's a story of the love of books, the importance of the stories that we read, the importance of the people in our lives, and the decisions that we make that affect the people in our lives. It's very, very sweet. It does have really, really hard-hitting chapters and scenes that are written so beautifully, and I loved the discussions I had while I was reading it with people on my Discord and us kind of unpacking some of the scenes and how they hit us. It was just it was a lovely reading experience, a lovely buddy reading experience. Highly recommend if you're into that, if you're into literary fiction about grumpy old men having their hearts opened up a little bit and having gaining a family, found family. Another recent read is by a, an author who's well known and well loved, but this is one of his more, his lesser known, lesser talked about books as far as I can tell, and it's called And Put Away Childish Things. This is a novella and it is a doorway fantasy. At first it kind of seems like it's going to be really derivative and I think that's intentional. It's it's cheekily pulling from other stories and inserting them here, sometimes entire scenes that feel like a remake, and sometimes um, funny little nods, like when, uh, <laughs> so 
this follows Harry, who whose grandmother wrote um, the un the un Underwood the Underwood series. It's the Narnia of this world, and uh, anyway, the, these are stories that he grew up knowing. He grew up being uh, he, being around all the time as his grandmother is the author. And now he's an adult. He's grown. He's got life, and it's not so easy or going so well, and he goes through his doorway. He enters the world that his grandmother wrote about. Um, but there are funny little scenes like when these people come and approach him and they're like, hey, I think you're who we're looking for. We have a wardrobe. And he's like, no, that's that other series. You, you're going to want to go to the manor over there. <laughs> that's not my series. Like, there's these funny little nods as well. But anyway, he finally does go into his world, and uh, it turns out that the world has been waiting for him for too long. They've been waiting for him to arrive with the sword, with this magic artifact that's supposed to help them, but they've been left to rot. And this world is literally rotting. It's these characters that he's known for so long and this world that he's in his mind interacted with now he's stepped into but it's literally rotting. And uh, the very vivid scenes, some creepy scenes, some charming scenes, and it's him uh, kind of having this this juxtaposition of, okay, life as an adult in the real world, it's not quite going the way that I planned. Now I've entered into my Narnia and that's not quite the way I thought it would go either if I believed that this would happen. I did not imagine it like this. So what do I do now? Where, what's my role here? What do I do with this world that I've entered into? And do I, do I still have some responsibility to it? Do I still have some desire to still try to help it, even if it's not quite the world that I, it doesn't look the way that I thought it was going to look? Again, it's a quick book. I really enjoyed it. Next is Sister Samurai. This is another novella, very quick read. I think I read it in two sittings, though I could have easily done in one if I had organized my time better. Um, this, the, the back blurb, the beginning of it says, this is no revenge story. And boy, is that true. So we follow our protagonist who, she does, she's done fighting for people. She's done putting her neck out there for the rest of the world. She's ready to just do her job, get home, no, do her job, eat her ramen, and get home. And she's at a ramen shop when uh, a scuffle happens, a kerfuffle goes on, and she has to step in, which leads to the wider story. This has samurai action, magic that's wrapped up in ink and runes, and there are people trying to take the ink, steal up all the ink for themselves, and we have to figure out what's going on there. It also has, it deals with grief and a sense of belonging and uh, missing those that you lost and honoring those that you lost, as well as uh, walking through life, moving forward while still carrying the pain of those that you lost. In this short novella, there's so much emotion packed into these pages. Again, in the Discord where we buddy read, just so many moving scenes and quotes that just demanded to be discussed. Great action, tons of fun, tons of emotion. The next one on my list is another novella. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't plan it this way. Night of the Mannequins. So this is a horror slash thriller. I mean, I think it's categorized as a horror by the publisher. Anyway, I will preface this by saying that this does not have good readings on, uh, good ratings on Goodreads. And I know this is a very polarizing book. I read this with Jimmy and we loved it. And I know that Evie also loves this book. So check out them for more voices on voices of praise for it. So this follows a friend group who, uh, <laughs> it's their last summer together as, as high schoolers, as kids, and they're trying to just live it out. And, um, <laughs> they decide to do one last hurrah. There's a mannequin that they stole earlier in the summer and it's just kind of gone to the wayside. And so they pull it out for one last hurrah. They do this ridiculous, um, prank at the movie theater where one of their friends works and uh, it doesn't go the way that they thought it would. The mannequin actually just gets up and walks away out of the theater on its own. So that was weird. So Sawyer, our main character, freaks out about that and the friends just kind of brush it off, but he really fixates. And from there, the mannequin starts 
kind of following Sawyer. He, it starts appearing in his life more and more and then maybe also starts picking his friends off. And it's a very close novella. We are in Sawyer's mind. We're focusing on his processing of everything, his interpretation of everything. I Again, I wouldn't necessarily categorize this as horror. I'd more consider it to be a psychological thriller, maybe. I'll just say it's not the story that you, th that you think it is. But there's so much wrapped up in the voice of this novella to the point that as I was reading it, and I don't like mysteries, and this isn't really a mystery, but I don't, I am not the clue collector. I do not read an Agatha Christie book and try to solve the mystery before she is, she does. That is that's not who I am as a person. But in this book, I was collecting so many data points to try to understand what was going on. Jimmy was too. We were, we were fixated on the details and probably reading too much into, into certain things. And by the time we got to the end, the ending isn't this in your face clear ending. It's kind of it's kind of subtle, uh, but I think the answers are definitely there. So when I finished the book, I turned around and started reading it again to try to collect the data points again <laughs> and see if I come to the same conclusion. Actually, I did do a spoiler review uh, where I just like, you know the meme, I did the meme. Anyway, like I said, really mixed reviews on this one, so you may hate it, but. I did not. Uh, final book, which also doesn't have like the greatest reviews in the whole wide world, but it's fine. Uh, Deep as the Sea, Red as the Sky. Now I will admit that this book <laughs> does make my list because of my love for pirates. So there's this, there's this pirate queen, this Chinese pirate queen that has one of the most brutal and wild legends. She commanded the largest fleet that we know of in history and she was ruthless. Like. She gives a command and you say, I don't know about that, instant beheading, done. We're, we're not talking today. <laughs> and that was every day. You do not talk back, you do not resist. I rule with an iron fist. She was, she was, I really like her legend. So anyway, this is her story fictionalized, which, you know, there's liberties taken and there's things, but it didn't say on the back of this book that it was her story. I just started reading and she had the same beginnings as Ching Shi, which is the historical true pirate queen. She went by several names, but anyway, uh, she had the same beginnings and then she had the same, a similar progression. And then I just, I got to find out organically that this was about one of my favorite pirate legends, one of my favorite pirate, historical pirate people, who knows how much is true, you know, the history around pirates is a little bit muddy. And I got to see her being fictionalized. And I don't know, I don't see very many, I don't see very many fictions that pull from this particular legend. So it was really exciting for me. I I'm gonna admit, it was kind of a boring book. <laughs> there, weren't, there wasn't like a crazy amount going on. The action was good, but it was few and far between. Um, but because I'm so interested in Qingxi and in just pirate history as a whole, I enjoyed myself so much reading this book. I actually really wish it was longer. It's only like 300 pages. And I really wish that we had just gone into her legend and, and just gone for it. Um, but I don't know. I really enjoyed myself reading this. I loved it so much, actually. But I see why it gets mixed reviews as well. A lot of the reviews called it boring. And I, I mean, I, I wasn't bored reading it, but I acknowledge that it was very dense in like in the history and lore. And um, also not like not super action packed. Side note, if you want a good pirate nonfiction, I really love Under the Black Flag. I think I read five-ish um, pirate nonfictions in 2023, might've been four, I don't remember now. And Under the Black Flag was easily my favorite variety. Let's cover several legends. And I also really liked If a Pirate I Must Be, which was specifically focused in on Blackbeard, but also touched on some other legends as well. It's really good stuff. Okay, ending this video on the series that I was telling you about at the beginning that isn't necessarily unheard. I mean, it's won awards, it's good, it's a good series, but for some reason, no one seems to talk about it on booktube. And if they do, like I, when I finished reading the, tr the trilogy, I needed to talk about it more, even though I made an hour long video about it, um, I needed more. So I was looking at videos on booktube and there's hardly any, and most of them are, uh, people didn't have a great time with the series. So I would like to die on this hill. I would like to stand here and say, Annihilation is so good. I read Annihilation 
uh, I think in November or December of 2023. And then I reread it in February and then just blitzed through uh, the next two books, Authority and uh, Acceptance. Authority and Acceptance. They're library books. They're gone now. Though I would eventually like to collect all three. Anyway, this series is very different in the way that it's written. It's very odd and I did end the series saying, what did I just read? So know that going into it, it doesn't follow your typical linear, very straightforward, we understand what we read by the end kind of thing, but it's, I loved it so much. Okay, so the, the first book, Annihilation, we follow the 12th, 13th expedition? The 12th. It was an area where a tunnel or a tower that's sunken in, we don't know, we're trying to figure that out, a mass, a thing, has appeared seemingly overnight and nature has taken over this area. It's grown up and it belongs there and it seems to be growing and expanding and very strange unexplainable things happen there. But because it's growing, the government needs to figure out what's causing it, what's going on there, find some sort of logic to the, some sort of logical pattern to what's going on and what can they do to make sure that it doesn't continue to grow and take over. So we're following the 12th expedition. Previously, we had other expeditions that would go in and every single expedition would either come out having uh, killed themselves, killed each other, or come back a shell of themselves. Um, they're still alive, but they're just, they're not the same. They are changed. So we're following the 12th expedition. We're specifically following the biologist of the expedition. She doesn't get a name because Area X, we don't use names here. We are just our jobs, our roles. We're here for a purpose and for a duty, and that's how we act. So they go into Area X and we go in with them. We go with the biologist into the tunnel and we see what's inside, or the tower, and we see what's inside and it changes us too. <laughs> um, so we, we go into the tunnel. We also go into, there's a lighthouse that we explore and it's very tension filled. It's, I would call it more cosmic horror um, than traditional horror. It's, it's very, something strange is happening here. It's that sense of unease, that sense of eerie, that claustrophobia, not axe murder chasing you around the house, which is, that's the kind of horror that I like personally. That's, this is my jam. So it's the unexplainable. It's the something is bigger than us and we don't know what to do with it. So, and then book two is, uh, we follow a government official who is interviewing previous people who've gone on expeditions as well as has the files and the data and is trying to trying to understand area x uh, and then book three is us going back into the belly of the beast through multiple perspectives of people that we've collected along the last two books we're going to go back to the origins of area x we're going to go through area x again now we're going to see more of what's inside here and it's just a trip I think it's a good balance of there's too many questions to answer, but we will answer a few while also realizing that there's a lot more questions here than we initially thought. And we just, oh, I loved it so much. I don't understand it all, but I do love it. And I did make an hour long video for it, um, vlogging my experience reading through it. They're spoiler free and spoiler sections. Uh, and I just, I just love this. I love this trilogy so much. Watch out for it in my next uh, top 10 series list that I do at the beginning of every year. You'll have to wait a minute, but it'll be there. Speaking of, actually, if you're still here <laughs> at the end of the video, speaking of, while I was reading through these three books, actually, after I finished my reread of book one, I specifically said, I wish I had a giant commentary bind up of this trilogy. I wish that I could just read through the story again, but with um, Vandermeer's notes that I could see, I could learn more about this story. It's in the vlog. You could see me saying it. I mean it. So shout out to Campfire again. Thanks again for, uh, for sponsoring this video and you should check them out in the description if you want <laughs> to be able to have access to that in new stories that you discover. Anyway, thanks for checking out this video. Let me know if you're going to pick up any of these books. I'll see you again soon. Bye.